going to be talking about the 44 Ghanaians who are among the 56 West African migrants that were killed in the Gambia back in 2005. Now, sometime in 2019, uh, there were two uh, soldiers who admitted to actually committing this crime, and they said they were acting on the orders of former Gambian president, ex-president Yaya Jame. Now, there's a, a new documentary that has been put out uh, narrating this story, and so I quickly want you to take a look at this documentary, the trailer, actually, and I have the producer and the narrator in the studios to tell us more. Death is a serious state of affairs in Ghana. Funerals are as much for the dead as they are for the family. They give the bereaved an important sense of closure. It's the only way for a family to move on. But for that to happen, there is one thing you absolutely must have. The body of the deceased. My name is Isaac Manson, and I cannot bury my father. That was just a bit of the trailer of uh, the docu-series, I Cannot Bury My Father. And in the studio, so I have Isaac Mensah, who is the narrator, and that's his voice you heard in the trailer. And Nana Jo Ndo is the director and producer. Good morning, and thank you so much for joining me. Morning. First of all, tell me why you decided to go ahead with a documentary on this particular issue. Okay, well, first of all, thank you so much for having us here today. and Giving us an opportunity to um, talk about this story. Um, it's an absolutely tragic story. It mm. happened in 2005, um, so 19 years ago, um, and um, 15 years. oh, sorry, 15, 15 years ago, yeah. and um, it um, seemed to be forgotten. Um, and there's this idea that maybe the families have moved on, but the families have not moved on. They never got justice. They're still mm. seeking for justice, um, and it's very. I can see how it would be very difficult for people who have not experience such a tragedy to understand what the families are going through and the idea was to have people be able to connect with the families and what better way than understanding not being able to bury a loved one mm. we know how funerals are so important in ghana in our yeah. society that you know not being able to be not to have that to have that taken away from you to give you know a proper send-off to a loved one mm. and to know as well that you know those who committed the crime as well are free yeah. have not been um, held accountable, that actually adds salt to injury. Okay. Yes. How easy or difficult was it getting all the information and getting the families involved in this documentary, at least to give you the background information on what really happened? Okay. So, um, I mean, we do have the facts, mm. but there are also many, um, on, um, there are many, many questions left un un Answered, unanswered. Yeah. Um, and that's mainly because, you know, um, I think that the government was not very transparent back then. Mm. There was a, a report that was submitted by the UN, yeah. which was never made public. It was never it shared with the shared families. With family, yes. So all the facts that we have are based on investigations that Human Rights Watch and Tri International conducted, and also from the account from the families. Mm. And in this particular one, we specifically focus on just one family, which was the family of um, Isaac Mensa, okay. having them like go through um, everything asking them all the, they, they themselves they're still asking themselves all these questions like oh. you know how there were some bodies that were returned in uh, 2009 just about, just about eight or so yes bodies were but returned, yeah. apparently one of them was not even a Ghanaian mm. yes um, but they never saw the bodies as well they could not identify the the remains mm -hmm. so there are all these questions about how do you know that you know these were the these were the actual yeah. Ghanaians that were murdered so, yeah. Well, some of them, how do you know that these are the exactly. bodies? Um, mm -hmm. There was never a DNA test, they said. So there's, there, there are many unanswered questions, and we want, you know, Ghanaians to actually also ask these questions, yeah. you know, because what happened to them could happen to anyone else. Mm -hmm. I like that you mentioned Isaac Mentor, what is, uh, you, your family member was involved? Yes, my father was part. Your father? Was part. Okay, how young were you then? I was 12 years by then. Okay, and how did you receive the news? Uh, one day, uh, we, my father said he was leaving uh, Ghana to Senegal to do a transit to Europe. So when he got to Senegal, he used to call my mother and then he shared stories of Senegal with her. Okay. So uh, 
uh, one day she told us, my dad told us you'll be coming back in Nagas to come and he was a cocoa pitcher Sinclair. Mm. So he was he will be coming back in Nagas to come and buy the main crop. So we were expecting him and then till August we did not hear from him. Mm. So one day we one of my mother's siblings in Kumasi had uh, Mr. Martin Tre, who is the sole survivor of that mother uh, mm. in Gambia, sharing narrating a story on Radio Mercury. So uh, my mother's sibling intent uh, calling my mother to inform her of what uh, she had okay. on Radio Mercury. So we intend calling uh, Mr. Tre to our hometown and we showed him pictures of my father. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Tre confirmed to us that my father was part of the journey they embarked on. But when they arrested them, they divided them into groups. And my father wasn't part of Martin's group, which he had the, the gunshots. Aww. So uh, he wasn't part of that group. So that is how come we get to hear of that news. How did this impact you, your family? Uh, my father was the breadwinner of the family. And growing up without him, you see, as a child, you have to mentor someone. Yeah. And my father wasn't around to be mentored. To mentor uh, you, you mean? Yes, yeah. to mentor me. Yeah. So uh, it was stressful, financial burdens, like going to school and then they sucking you home for school fees. Like uh, my grandmother, like now when you talk to her and you say, uh, Grandma, how are you? She'll be talking of something else, mm. simply because of what had happened to her son. Which he've not had any good news from the government. When uh, the UN and then ECOWAS did an investigation mm. in 2009, and we are the victims involved in the case. Yeah. And in good terms, you should share those reports with us. Yeah. You should disclose it because we are feeling the pain. You are not, even though they are your citizens. Yeah. You have the right to share the information with us. Mm. And it's quite pathetic since 2009 that. Uh, they echo us because they don't know us. And government is our representative at the echo us. Mm -hmm. And so they shared the report with government. Yeah. So it, is, it was up to government to share that report with us. But they didn't. And they have not. Mm -hmm. They have yeah. not. Your father's body never arrived. Never returned. And it's, it's maybe even the bodies that they returned. I don't know whether... Uh, uh, they are indeed Ghanaians because uh, uh, a brother of mine who was part of the documentary, uh, it was confirmed that he was in the same pickup with Martin, with Martin. which the incident happened. Yeah. I asked him, did they take their DNA before uh, t telling them? Uh, they, f they said no. Recently, the president was asked at the press briefing, um, you know, what he was doing about the situation. I don't know if you heard his yes, response yes. about how he cannot interfere because yes. this is more of a Gambian thing. So the president is the one who has to initiate mm. and work on this issue. Mm. And then after that, they will be able to step in. How did you feel about his response? Uh, he said, Ghana do not have the powers yeah. to extradite Yaya yeah. to yeah. Ghana. Yeah. Mm. And I think <laughs> it is possible. You think it's possible? It's possible. It has happened before. It happened to Charles Taylor when he was in Senegal. Mm. Okay. In, Nigeria. In, in, in Nigeria, yes. Yeah. It happened to the Chadian dictator who sought refuge in Senegal. So it can happen to Yaya Jame. He can be extradited from Equatorial Guinea to Ghana because he committed crime against humanity. Mm. And then those humans involved in the case are Ghanaians. That means we are, we are victims. Ghana is a victim to that case. And we can try Yaya Jame in Ghana. And if we try him and he's found guilty, will that be enough for the family? Yes, he's found guilty. If he's convicted of the crime. Convicted. That, yeah. And then uh, them bringing the remains of our relatives. We want to bury them. They, they were human beings. We were cherished. They have to be buried with dignity. So we want to bury our, our loved ones. We want them to bring back what if they our remains. Have? They have. They have it. They have it. You see, human teeth, it, it doesn't go rotten. So they, they should come for my DNA and then use it to search 
for my father so that I can give a befitting burial to my father. I want to bury my father. I want to bury him. I want to bury him with dignity. That is why I'm fighting for justice. Wow. This, this is heavy, I must say. Um, is, is this, when is this coming out? I, I it's out, is out already? Yes. Okay. It's actually um, on YouTube. Okay. Um, you just have to search, I cannot bury my father, and then you'll find it. You'll find yes. it on YouTube. I on YouTube. Bury yes. My father. Yes. Um, th this is tough, and I, I really do hope that they, um, you know, find closure on this particular issue as well. And I'd like to encourage our government officials to step in and do as much as possible, especially for families like these who um, have no answers to the whereabouts of their family members, whether indeed they were a part of the massacre or not. We really cannot tell. But yes, justice must prevail. Yes. Absolutely. It'll be fine. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank, thank you for telling this story, by the way, especially because you are Gambian. I'm half Gambian, half Ghanaian. Half Ghanaian as yes. well. Yes. Okay, so then this is right at your doorstep as it is ours exactly. as well. Thank but you so much. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Thank you. All right, so I've been speaking to Nana Jo Indel. She's the director and producer of I Cannot Bury My Father, which is a documentary on the 44 Ghanaians that were um, massacred in Gambia in 2005, um, among other 56, um, you know, West Africans. And also Isaac Mensa was the narrator in the docuseries, and his father was a part of the 44 Ghanaians who were slain. Thank you again.